I was invited by the business school to come in and tell a little bit about my story. I personally got a lot out of the opportunity to come speak to the business school. Having business leaders come in to speak to the students helps give them something to relate to, helps give them something to shoot for, helps give them someone to ask questions of that, that have been through it. Uh, and I think it's valuable for the community to have a chance to learn more about the business leaders in their community. I have seen huge differences in, in what uh, UHUV has done in the community. It's really neat to see. My UHV education has helped me tremendously in my job. First of all, of course, the counting courses relate directly to what I do as a budget director, but also the management courses that I took have helped me grow other individuals within my office and mentor them. During Alumni Week, the School of Business invites alumni to come in and speak with students. I had the opportunity to give them my story. Being a first-generation student in my own family could connect with those same people who are in class. When alumni want to come back and speak to the different classes during Alumni Week, that speaks volumes to their loyalty to this institution. It helps alumni to connect with the students that are here, letting them know that they're a success story, and then those students, too, can also be another success story. Good evening, it's good to be back. I've been missed from this event for the past four years for attending a conference, so I'm lucky to be back this time. The conference this year was in Austin. I could drive back quickly <laughs> compared to the other years, but uh, my colleague, Dr. Solansky, uh, filled my position the, p the past three years, so I'm glad to be back. I have to say that uh, I am proud of uh, our School of Business, proud of UHV, in general and working with my colleagues and the administration. And uh, we have had a lot of accomplishment. I was approached during the last commencement by somebody, an elected official, who told me, I see your picture in the newspaper more than my picture in the newspaper. <laughs> I have to give credit to Paula Cobbler and the communication department for highlighting a lot of activities in the School of Business and the accomplishment of our students, our alums, our advisory boards, and uh, faculty who have contributed to the well-being and the recognition that the school has received. As Dr. Morgan mentioned, we have had several major events that took place this past year. Uh, obviously, the number one in my mind, and I have to thank President Morgan and Regent Welder more than anyone for pushing my insistence in terms of remaining in Houston market and having the new KD building and offering the MBA program. As you know, we have had the largest MBA program in the Houston market for many years. In fact, three years ago, we were ranked number one with 968 MBA students, larger than any school in Houston. It was important that we continue that tradition and offer our program in Houston because we are serving a different target market, and a lot of our students happen to be working employees who need to have access to uh, flexible course offerings in the evening or online. And our university has been ahead of many other schools, and therefore we were successful in terms of recruiting more students and serving full-time employees who needed to get the degree, and they came to our a strategic MBA or global MBA. So that is something that I'm very proud of and our faculty now have offices. We have 22 classrooms in the new KD building that we offer courses there and it has been very important for our program to continue in KD. In Victoria and the North Building, Dr. Morgan mentioned, we have a new center for financial services or what we call it a financial lab that is going to be helping a lot of our students in finance to really work with uh, equity market and investment. So a lot of you who are interested in investing and having a good rate of return, I encourage you to give your money to our students rather than Mark Zafario. <laughs> <laughs> I joke with Mark Zafario, he is my financial advisor. I, many of you have heard it. I tell him that I do better by accident than he does on purpose. <laughs> But he's a good guy, and I want to plug for him to, to get some clients if, if he can. He's here, and I'm proud of him. 
our school has offered new programs and we have uh, uh, new concentrations in economics, in uh, human resource management, and international business. So we are growing our programs in order to recruit and satisfy the need of our undergraduate students in Victoria. As uh, Dr. DeLeo mentioned, the 95 authors coming to campus and the ranking of the School of Arts and Science, I cannot be too far behind him. I have to talk about our rankings. First of all, for the ninth year in a row, we have been among the top 294 best business schools by Princeton Review. We are an accredited business school by AACSB. Less than 5% of business schools are accredited by AACSB, and we happen to be one of those. And we have gone through two rounds of maintenance of accreditation with flying color and plenty commendations and best practices that other universities are trying to replicate. So that's something that we're proud of. The credit goes to our faculty, goes to our students, administration that has supported and provided such opportunity and recognition for us. Uh, we have had uh, rankings uh, in so many different ways, and uh, actually I have about 29 of them. I don't want to go through all of them. <laughs> but we have been known for affordability of an accredited program. We have been ranked among the top three in the nation for providing education to minorities. We are known for diversity of our school. We have students from 41 different countries coming to School of Business at UHV. We have faculty that come from 17 different ethnicities and background. So that is really a true reflection of diversity of our schools, and the ranking that we have received has been something that we're proud of. In fact, when the peer review teams came to campus, they told me that they have never seen any university or a school of business that was up for accreditation to be so diversified and they were curious as to how we have been successful to do that. I told them, listen to my accent, you will know. That. <laughs> In terms of online education, we have been ahead of many schools, as Dr. Morgan mentioned, and especially quality program. Many other universities who have decided to offer their MBA or business programs online and distance education, they have come to us to learn what is it that we do in terms of the recognition that we have received, in terms of rigor, in terms of standards. One thing that I'm proud of saying is that our online degree or our online program is taught by qualified faculty who have their PhD. The same faculty who teach face-to-face -face or in-class courses for us, they also teach online. In other words, very seldom we rely on adjuncts coming, uh, teaching one course and basically not as much loyalty to our program as our full-time faculty. And we have been lucky to hire, the past seven years I've been here, we have hired 26 qualified faculty, highly qualified faculty from major universities, from the Pac-10 schools, Big Ten schools, and SEC schools, and we are proud of their accomplishment. Their publication record and their contribution to our program has been something that has brought those recognition to our program. And I couldn't be more proud of their contribution and help to our students. They have helped us in terms of growing our program, help our students to get a good education, and providing experiential learning and helping with internship programs, and hopefully finding them a good job. And I have to say that the graduates of School of Business in the state of Texas, at the MBA level, they are the top the third from the top in terms of their income and earning when they graduate. At the undergraduate level, we're also number three. So to be ahead of many schools in the state of Texas in terms of the quality of program and the degree that our students have received and the salary they have commended, that is something remarkable. Uh, I am proud of a lot of our graduates and alumni. Uh, we have had several that have really moved to bigger and better places uh, multi-millionaires. One of them was supposed to be here, who was on my advisory board, but texted me that he had some situation that couldn't make it. Stephen Kaufman has been one of our graduates, and he was recognized among the top 40 under 40 years old. And he has Zeus Mortgage in Houston, one of the fastest companies in the United States. And he has been very helpful to our program and has become one of our speakers at many occasions. Uh, one other alumni who's here that I, I would like to recognize, of course, we have so many of them, from Jennifer Yancey to uh, Mr. Kennedy to uh, Ms. Sanders, you saw on the video. We have 
Uh, even Wayne Barron is all graduates. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm proud of uh, Chad Hall. Chad Hall and Michelle are here. Chad was recognized recently in Nashville when many companies were represented, from IBM to Verizon to Dell to uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, and they were looking for the top leaders in different industries. And Chad Hall was among the top three among those leaders and was recognized. That is his picture. We couldn't be more proud of Chad. One of the things that is important to our school and to me personally is engagement of our students. You saw Ben Keating on the video. Uh, I was delighted and thrilled and appreciated the fact that he agreed to become one of our distinguished speakers in Victoria. We have had this for the past four or five years. We have had more than 45 uh, distinguished speakers and executives who have come talk to our students. From Rod Canyon, founder of Compaq Computers, to President of the Lorian Car Company, to President of HEB, Vice President of Whole Foods, to Conoco Phillips, uh, Eber Losoro of Regency. We have had many, many speakers, and we decided that we need to offer these in Victoria as well. So last year, Eber Losoro uh, started the, uh, our distinguished lecture series in the fall. Ben was the speaker, and recently, last week or two weeks ago, we had Helen Sharkey, who was working for Danergy, and it was uh, uh, a heartbreaking story that all of us heard. So we intend to continue those lecture series and I'm proud of doing that. Part of it, the reason for bringing uh, our speakers to campus or alumni to campus to talk to our students is the fact that our accrediting body is requiring that business school should be more engaged in terms of innovation, being more innovative in terms of what we offer. We need to be engaged, not only with the community, our students need to be engaged, the business community needs to be engaged, our faculty needs to be engaged, and the third and the most important part, we need to be impactful. We, meet, we need to have some positive impact in the society. Bringing Ben and the others to campus and talking to our students or guiding our students and giving a few lessons is more important to me as reading the textbook that our students are doing. So it's important that we provide opportunities in terms of internships, in terms of lecture series, in terms of alumni week we have had 36 of our alums that they came during homecoming week and went to classes and talked to our students, talked about their experience, provided advice as to how to be successful or not to make the mistakes that they made. So those are some of the activities that we have been involved and we have benefited from our alums and our distinguished lecturers who have come to our campus. We have had a lot of support, not only from the community in Victoria, but at my advisory board, Dr. Morgan mentioned Chairman Wu and his contribution of $600,000. That has been very impactful for our students. Students who are first generation college students who probably could not travel to other states within the United States have been able to go to China with less than $1,500 out of their pocket for 17 days. Just because they received $2,000 scholarship from that fund that we received. And that has been something that has impacted the 58 students that have participated in that program. This past uh, July, Dr. and Mrs. Morgan and I went to China, we visited different universities, we signed several MOUs to make sure that we have more interaction with foreign universities and students can come to our campus and benefit from what we have in Victoria. A lot of them are interested in coming to a small town that they don't have to worry about traffic, they don't have to worry about crime, they don't have to worry about the cost of uh, housing and Victoria with the university housing can provide such opportunities. So we're hopeful that we can build on that and grow our program and the recognition that we have is spread throughout the world. We have supporters, not only people who have contributed financially or come to our students and classes and spoken and guided them, but we have had companies and corporations who have donated money. One of the organizations that has helped us has been Bloomberg Business Week. They every year have given us $8,000 that we have given to our faculty in the form of Bloomberg Teaching and Bloomberg Research Awards that we give to our outstanding faculty that are selected by committee of their peers. So overall, there have been a lot of activities in our school, and if there is something in the newspaper, it's because 
it has been recognized or the press release has come out and Paula thinks it's a good idea that we distribute those kind of things. And if there is a quote from me, my picture is there. If there is a quote from Dr. Morgan, Dr. Morgan's picture is there. I hope they do not ask Dr. DeLeo for a quote. <laughs> With that, <laughs> I'm going to turn it to Provost. Thank you.